Thursday Bible study, discipleship series at 6 30. Uh, Night of Awareness, Friday, March 27th. Uh, be informed about the human trafficking. Uh, we, we don't realize it, but apparently it's much more prevalent in our local area than, than we ever thought. So just keep that in mind and be here to, to see what what is happening with that and what we can do to help. Also, uh, a sunrise service, Sunday, April 12th at 7 o'clock. Breakfast following, there's a sign up sheet in the back for that. And that's all I have for way of announcements. Opening praise here this morning is everlasting love. If you feel like you stand, if you're too tired, you can sit. <laughs> Oh, the next one's a good one too. 
Next praise him as he has made me glad. some strange days ahead, but continue to put your faith in the Lord and he will see that things are done for you and for his people. Um, also, those who need to make a decision and those who have fallen away but need to find their way back. Uh, Linda has got a, uh, a procedure and that's on the 20th. We're going to try another back procedure. Um, it's the same one he did on me here a few weeks ago, and it did pretty good, but it's, it's a three-part deal, so this will be the first part for her. And on the third, I get the second part of mine. Uh, Mary Banks, as she continues treatments, prayers for encouragement and strength. Bessie sees a doctor tomorrow about ECG reading to determine if surgery is approved for this Friday. Alan Fleming, recovering from a fall. Uh, the doctor this week, to the doctor this week for a tear in his eye. Um, Alan Deo, Deo, Todd's brother, diagnosed with leukemia uh, to begin chemotherapy. Jim Carmen, leukemia is in check, is now awaiting tests regarding his lungs. Esther Harris, Julia's mother, recovering from surgery at Allegheny Hospital in Pittsburgh. Jim Grant and family. The pastor of his wife, Mary Jane, uh, services the last week. Joe Day, Dean's brother, now out of the hospital and back home, regaining strength. Mike Snyder, recovering from a bout of poison ivy or poison oak. Uh, Kennedy Douglas, Teresa's great niece, testing for possible heart condition. Bob Guy, Teresa's brother, for prayer. Craig and Bobby Gibson, for health related. From others who are under the weather. Bowie away for surgery on her left shoulder. A Dutch caper says to say hello and to everyone and to tell you he loves us. Uh, several anonymous requests. So as we come to this prayer time, prayer this morning is tell it to Jesus, call on which brother Donnie will have our prayer this morning. Richard. Oh, yes, ma'am. I have three. Owen, three. Owen is down sick. Owen. 
Um, Joyce Papers Joyce is Papers. not feeling well. Not feeling well. And Jim is at Ed Express as we speak. He's got a rash or something on his leg, and it's on, it looks like it's getting better, but it looks like it's a lot worse. So he's there right now. Okay, so Owen. Joyce Capers. Joyce Capers. And Jim. Just sanitize the gym. Pray for all them. Keep them in your prayers. Okay. Tell them to Jesus. Are you weary? Are you heavy? Are you Tell them to Jesus. Tell them to Jesus. Are you weary? Are you joined to pardon? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a man that's You know I'm such a friend and brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do the tears flow down to Jesus and me. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus, and he sent a man to the time of healing. Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus, he is a man that will know. You will know I have a discussion with the brother. Tell it to Jesus, come on, let's go. Do you fear the love and the sorrow? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious what you'll be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus, come Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's alone. You know I have such a friend of brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedom that we come in your house to worship you. We pray that we will continue to keep doing that freely. So that nobody would tell us we can't. Uh, we pray that we for courage for everyone that's here. We ask for your blessing upon each and every one of us and, and all these folks that are down ill. We, we hope that you'll touch them and you heal them and you get them back on their feet. We guide each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, communion here this morning will be when I survey the wondrous cross. And Rose Rogi has our communion meditation. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to be reading from Romans 5, verses 8 through 11 this morning. Romans 5, verses 8 through 11. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What more then have we now have been justified by his blood? We are saved from the wrath of God through him. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only this, but we will also be exalted in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, with whom we have now received reconciliation. When you read those verses, you look, quite a few things happen. One, God demonstrated his own love towards us. We just don't think, did he really have to do that? He created us. He could also destroy us. But no, he chose to love us and not to send his son. And then Christ himself, you read in the Bible, that when he's preparing to go on the cross, his body actually seeks blood from the anxieties and what he faced. And can you imagine the horror and the what he knew he was coming, what Christ had paid for us, not even born yet. 
And then you look from the wrath of God. So you know God is not going to accept us without his son. So just think about that today. You come to the table, even though we have all these problems in the world. But I heard a pastor this morning on TV said, Adam and Eve would still be here if it wasn't for sin. Amen. So we are battling something that our parents started to battle with in the garden. And sin was constantly going to be at us all the time. But you think about the faith you have in Christ. You look at this table, this represents something Christ left for us to do. But yet at the same time, your faith, you come in here today, you leave the world clouds behind. Christ took, Christ took care of all that on that cross. If you got on that cross to take care of these sicknesses and diseases, we are going to have eternity. We're probably going to sell all of us sooner or later. But our spiritual body is going to live on forever in eternity with Christ. So if you come to the table this morning, let the coals and the sniffles and money pots and all the nine out there at that door. There's a much greater thing you can pay for here today. Thank you. Communion hymn is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. When I survey the wondrous cross, on which the prince of glory died. My riches gain I count but lost, and forfeit them on all my For it is more than I should boast, save in the death. Of Christ's God, all the that were a prison far too strong. Blood so amazing, so divine. Demons must be my life. Lord. As we come to this table today, let us focus upon your son. Let us take a moment and think what this bread represents, his body, feet, torn, leg. But yet, he had enough love to get on that cross for us. And as he sets this table for us to come every week to and spend this time with him, let us do it out of love and joy. Let's just focus on your son, the one that paid for our salvation, paid for our eternity, in full, no questions asked. In Jesus' name. Thank you, dear Lord, for all the many blessings you bestow upon us. Thank you for the great country we live in. As we come to our time of communion with you, let us realize how important it is to put our thoughts and our minds upon you. You know, if it wasn't for you, no grace would be available to us. And, you know, a lot of times we get caught up in our world and we think we got the answers. And we try to do the right thing and everything else. But we got to know that we need to put our faith in you and you only. You are the way, the only way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Let's pray. Lord, we come to this time of service to give back to you. First and foremost, give us a loving heart. Because our Lord loves us and sent his son to die on the cross for us. So if you give back today, give for that joyful heart. So the Lord will use what we give to him wisely and carefully because our Lord is back. He loves us enough to send his son. He loves us enough to let his son die for us. So if you give back today, just love him completely. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <laughs>
I've seen more close on fear over the coronavirus than I have faith. And I've seen more hype over toilet paper than I have about the fact that President Trump declared today, March 15th, as the National Day of Prayer. And when he declared a state of emergency, everybody went to panic and reason. He declared that was so they could free up federal funds to allow the individual states to do what they need to do. So we definitely want to keep up. What's the word we want here? Open we mind. want to keep it under control. And the coronavirus, the uh, uh, very first use of the term was in 1968. And there were even cases of it back in the 1800s. The common cold is caused by coronavirus. And what we have now is what they call it COVID 19, I believe. It's a different strain. There's like every couple of years, there's a different strain of, of the virus. And so we have to adapt to that. So, I don't want to panic during the pandemic if you, if you catch the drift, and I want to face the faith and fear because faith and fear cannot coexist. So we'll do everything constantly. Like Jerry Capers, for instance, did not come today because his resistance is low. So if your immune system is low, obviously you don't want to you know, put yourself at risk. I hope the day will come. When our society will be as hyped up over Jesus as they are over the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. You know, and we'll be cons- as concerned about people who are going to hell without Christ as we are concerned about the coronavirus. I had a conversation with Tim Thomas, so they're having services also over in Denison. And uh, he's kind of. And when I was talking to him, I didn't mean to, to say this in the conversation. I really didn't. I just wasn't paying attention to my words, I guess. But I told him, I said, now, Tim, if I knew you were sick, I would avoid you like the plague. And he laughed at me, that's what's going on out there. And I will. If you're sick, I'll respect that. And I will I try it all the cost. Because I don't want to catch it. I don't want to catch cold. I'm already taking care of it for allergies. So I'm not going to make light of it. If you want to repeat, faith and fear cannot coexist, and we can't afford to entertain fear in any area of our life. Because if you entertain fear, you know how it is when you entertain a guest? If you let, let fear come into your home as a guest, eventually it'll take over and become a full time resident. And so I'd like to pick up where both left off this morning in Romans chapter 5. Did I bring my Bible up with me? No. I did. I'd like to pick up. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, where he said, God commends his love for us. And now, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you, Jim. He gave me all these papers, too. I didn't need these. But... I mean, I thought that was kind of over here in three years. We got through all these. And if God would give his son for us, what would he not do for us, right? God is faithful. And we're in his hands. And if you go over to Romans chapter 8, verse number 31, the question is asked, what shall we say to these things? If God before us, who is against us? And if you've battled cancer, if you've battled financial difficulty, if you've been in a situation where your children have gone astray, You've lost loved ones to sudden death unexpected. You're all alone. God's for you. Who can be against you? If you've experienced ridicule for the faith, people have mocked you for being a Christian. Maybe your job has been in jeopardy because of your work ethic and your spiritual convictions. Maybe it's not wrong to work on Sunday, by the way. But maybe you have a conscientious objection to that, and you have a right to do that, by the way, not only as an American citizen, but as a Christian. But let's say that in your heart of hearts, you believe it was important enough to take Sunday off and call it the the Lord's Day. Maybe you lost a job over that. Maybe you were overlooked for a promotion. In verse 37 of chapter 8, whatever it is you have faced and are facing, 
in all these things, whatever it is, you fill in the blank, whatever it is you're facing that's seeking to undo you and the fear that's trying to destroy you, in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loves us. Amen? So nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, a few verses after what Richard had read this morning, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And then in Revelation chapter 12, if you have your Bibles, I hope you do. Just turn there, whether you're following along on your phone app, or whether you're following along in your actual scriptures. If you don't have a Bible, hopefully you have a piece of paper and you're taking some notes here so you can take these verses home with you and claim them and embrace them in the name of Jesus. By the way, that's what the power is in the name of Jesus Christ. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse number 7, there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon, that be Satan. Dragon, the dragon and his angels waged war, and they were not strong enough. And there was no longer a place found for them in heaven, and the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world. And he was thrown down to the earth. And his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down. He who accuses them before our God day and night. Even as I speak, Satan is accusing us. He's... He's coming before God like he tried to do with Peter and tried to sift the apostle Peter like wheat. He tried to undo Peter, destroy Peter. Remember that? And Peter denies Jesus three times and he almost was destroyed by it. But he returned and he was converted. He came back to strengthen his brethren. But Satan still yet to this day stands before God and he, he mentions you. He calls your name out. Before God and accuses you. Look what he's done wrong. Look how evil she is. They don't deserve to come to heaven and be with you. So there he is, accusing you. What are you going to do? You're just going to surrender to fear, succumb to that, give up, quit, and go to hell over it? No. The Bible says in verse 11, they overcame him. You overcame the devil. You can do it. How do you overcome? There's three things in that verse. And you can't get rid of any of them if you want to win. They overcame number one because of what? The blood of the Lamb. And then number two, they overcame because of what? The word of their testimony. And number three, they overcame because of what? They did not love their life even when faced with death. For this reason rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. Let's pray. Father, thank you for reminding us that we are victors through you, not victims. That through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we are more than conquerors. Through you, not conquered. Through you, Lord, we have peace in Jesus Christ because of the blood of the Lamb. So help us then, Lord, continue to speak it up, teach it up, live it up for Jesus Christ until the day of his return. And may we, Lord, have habits in our daily life that will bring victory, not defeat. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I encouraged you a few weeks ago to begin your own arsenal of faith. Take your Bible, and we spoke on baptism, and I shared some 25 verses with someone on baptism. Someone came to me and said, hey, brother, I found over 80, 80 some passages of scripture on baptism. They're building their arsenal of faith. Maybe it's on the topic of the Lord's Supper, but today I'd like you to consider beginning to build an inventory in that arsenal on all the topics that you can have is to begin in your journal, your faith journal, to begin a listing, a listing, if you would please, of individuals, whether men or women or children, through whom God has accomplished amazing, victorious things. 
The second Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 9, if you want to, use that as your litmus test for who you will include in that journal. Individuals whose hearts completely belong to God. Here's what 2 Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 9 says. And by the way, for what it's worth, I never heard this verse ever this week on any of the news stations. So I'm going to give it to you for free today, okay? The eyes of the Lord move to and fro throughout the earth that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. Second Chronicles. And you write that down. If you've got your Bible, check it. Make sure it gave you the right passage. Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. It's real close to the verse that says, the closer you get to God, the other you look. Which really isn't in there. But I just had to throw that in for fun. Because sometimes we think things are in the Bible, and they're not. The eyes of the Lord. You know how it is when someone does this and they look left and right? You're thinking they're about to do something illegal, right? They're like looking left and right. The eyes of the Lord are doing that, though. And he is searching the whole earth so that he may strongly support those whose heart is completely his. And that's a litmus test when you begin your list, if you choose to do so. I, I, I plan on doing this. And, I, and if you want to, begin in the Old Testament. And if you're looking for Old Testament examples, go to Hebrews 11, who lists a ton of people from the Old Testament whose heart completely trusted in their God, and God did amazing things through them. Like Abraham. Like Isaac. Gideon. Is mentioned and so many others. Sarah, you name it. And then, secondly, in that list of individuals, expand your list. Expand your list to include those in the New Testament. I mean, if you can bury the mother of Jesus, whose heart was complete with the Lord, and look at the amazing thing that God accomplished through her and bringing forth Jesus Christ, born in first. And then expand your list outside of the Bible history. People in history that you've read and studied, whose heart completely trusted in God. Thomas Jefferson was one of them. Thomas Jefferson, in his younger years, they were trying to go across a river during the Revolutionary period, and the river was raging, the water, and they were scared to cross. And there was young, one young fellow in the military that could not swim, and he was looking for someone to take him across this raging river. And, Thomas Jefferson said, I'll take it. Jefferson put the young man on his horse, and Jefferson walked across the river, and the water was up to his neck. And they got across okay. It was tough going. They didn't lose anybody. Once they got over, Jefferson said, why did you choose me to take you over? Why did you trust me? The man said, when I looked into your eyes, they said yes. Everyone else that he had asked him to take me over, he could see the fear in their eyes. And he thought, I'm not going to trust myself in this. The eyes of the Lord are roaming to and fro to see if we trust fully in our Lord. We joke about my basement. There's very few people on this planet that have faith that I'll ever do it, but I have faith that I will and I've already begun. I jokingly said the other day, but it's true, I have begun. The first thing I, I told Bob and I told Ron, I said, I have begun to clean my basement. I went downstairs about a week ago, and there was a Maxwell House coffee can missing the lid. I brought it upstairs and threw it away. I had begun. That's all I did that day. But since then, and probably unbeknownst to my wife, I'm trying to keep it a secret because I want to surprise her and I want Bo to still be alive when I'm done. So I'm even scared to tell Bo that I'm working on it because he says he'll be dead before I'm done. So I'm not even going to tell him when I'm close. <laughs> then I'll tell him he might have a heart attack or something. And anyway, since then, five garbage bags have been taken up out of that. It's on the way. It's on the way. <laughs> that's the voice of yes and 
But I mean, I've looked in the mirror so many times and I've thought about it happening, and but by evening my eyes say no. And that's why I don't do it now. But when my when my heart says yes, and when I trust in my God, whatever it is. Now, you start with the Old Testament, you start with the New Testament, expand your history. You get George Washington, the great leaders, Daniel Boone would be another. Um, there are so many throughout history. And they, they don't necessarily need to be people of the faith, that, that uh, of the faith that we hold. I, I know individuals that even held teachings that were false, that gave their lives in such a way that in their heart of hearts and hearts, whether they're in heaven or not, they trust in God and they accomplish amazing things. And I'm thinking if they can, and they're not even of the faith, why can't God's people of the faith accomplish great things as well? Follow? Right? And then expand, expand your list, number four, as God's looking to and fro, expand your list of these individuals through whom God has accomplished victorious, amazing things to modern history, people that are still living, day-by-day -day examples of people that maybe you see on the news where someone has accomplished something amazing, having faith in God. We don't know them necessarily, but because of media and social media, we see these amazing stories that encourage us. And then, fifth, expand to the people you personally know that have accomplished amazing things, right? With God working through them, doing amazing, victorious things. Beginning with the Old Testament, expanding to the New Testament, expanding to history, and then recent history, and today, present day, and then the people you personally know. And number six, you know who? Expand to yourself. Put yourself on the list. And see yourself as someone who, through whom God is accomplishing amazing things victoriously, overwhelmingly conquering because of the blood of the Lamb, the word of your testimony, and you don't love your own life, you know death. Put yourself, envision yourself in that list of greats that can be an inspiration to others. And if you'll focus, and if we'll focus together, like the song we sang. They'll know we are Christians by our love. We'll walk together and we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. If you focus on those types of individuals, individuals whose hearts completely belong to God, if you'll associate with them, if you understand what I'm saying here, if you associate with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Noah and Gideon, and the writer says in Hebrews 11, time to family and speak of all the others. If you'll associate with Peter, James, John, the ones in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 14, who are praying together. If you'll associate yourself with the apostles and the women with whom they were praying in Acts 1, 14, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, as they were praying. If you'll associate with the apostles of Acts chapter 2, as Peter takes his stand with the apostles, they were being mocked, being drunk, full of new wine. They weren't drunk. Peter took his stand together with the eleven. If you'll associate with them, if you'll associate with Christians, at that time they were also apostles, like Peter and John, who spoke to the people and proclaimed in Jesus the resurrection of the dead and healed the lame. And if you'll associate with them in Acts 3 and Acts 4, and then by Acts 4, 13, if you'll associate with Jesus, you'll have the confidence they, they had because they prayed together, they stood together, they spoke together, and they had confidence together. And then by Acts 4, 13, we begin to understand that what we behold is what we become. That with which we associate, we become. You follow? Paul said that evil companions do what to remorse? I think I heard it over here. Evil companions corrupt good morals. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But good, faithful companions, individuals whose hearts completely trusted in their Lord, 
Individuals who, as the screen has portrayed, I hope the scenes are continuing to go minute by minute. Individuals who will pray together and read together and stand together on the promises of God and speak the promises of God, they will have a confidence like they had in Acts 4, verse 13. As they looked at these men, they were uneducated, unlearned, but they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. You will become what you behold. I heard someone recount the story in the Old Testament. I think it was Jacob who loved Rachel and he served for seven years and then was tricked, right? And Leah was there in the morning. It's the origin of the English word surprise. And he was pretty upset about that surprise. He went to Laban and said, why have you tricked me? I, I, I agreed to work with you for seven years for Rachel. Now, give me Rachel. David said, only if you'll work for another seven years. And he did. He didn't have to wait for the second seven years to have Rachel, but he worked another seven years. And then friction between Laban and Jacob. And God came to Jacob and gave him a strategy for being a winner. And because Jacob's heart at that time, even though he was a trickster, <clears throat> Jacob's heart was still fully God's. And God, God told Jacob how he could leave Laban and head out on his own and leave a very wealthy man. Do you remember what he was told to do? He was told to take rods or sticks or something that had spots on it and put it in front of the cows that were mating. And so as the cows would eat, as they would drink, the cows would be looking at these sticks with spots on them. And, and the cows themselves weren't spotted. But God had said, Jacob, when it's time for you to go, you just tell Laban that you want all the cattle that he has that are spotted. And Laban didn't have a bunch of cows that were spotted at the time. Until after Jacob did what God told him to do with these sticks that had spots. I don't know if it really works in agriculture and all that. I wouldn't know. Ask some political leader out there who says farming is so easy. Okay, I won't mention names. But long of the story short was when those cows gave birth, their baby calves, whatever you call those things, baby cows, guess what? They were all spotted, which goes to prove what you behold, you will become. And as the speaker said, if it works for cows, it can surely work for us. That with which we associate. Individuals whose hearts are completely the Lord. So I hope you begin your biblical inventory of all God has accomplished victoriously through those who pray as one in Christ. That's point number one, Acts 1, verse 14. As they were waiting for the promise, Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem, and the promise of the Father will come. They were waiting day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. It was after the ascension of Christ. Day six, day seven, day eight, day nine, up to the tenth day, which would have been a Sunday. In Acts 1.14, the Bible says they continued as one in prayer. And then in Acts chapter 2, verse 14, that's point two, they were standing together as one. As the song we sang, they defended each man's dignity and they saved each man's pride. They were accused of being drunk. Peter, taking his stand with the eleven, said, These men are not drunk as you, as you suppose, but this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And he preached Jesus unto them. <clears throat> and then in Acts 3, as the ministry continues, and now thousands of Christians already, as they had repented and were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that's where the power is. In the name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 3, if you want a summary of Acts chapter 3, all you have to do is read Acts 4 verse 1. The Sadducees were upset because they were speaking to the people. Do you think this world is going to be upset with the church if we speak to the people? You can be confident the world will be upset because the devil who stands before God and accuses us, that's one thing of which he does not accuse us, sadly. 
you to think about it. But the devil who's accusing us does not want us to speak and teach the message of Jesus Christ to the people and proclaiming the resurrection of the dead. Whatever the tide, whatever the tide of public opinion, whatever the topic, whatever the wind of doctrine, whatever the trickery of men, I choose to speak precisely as the apostles spoke so I can speak just like Christ spoke and I encourage you to do the same. Amen? Because as I learned in Sunday school and was reminded, I didn't learn it, I was reminded because I always need reminders. I do. I'm not beyond needing reminded. And I was reminded that the message we speak is not ours, it's God's. God's the one that set down the rules, the boundaries. And we'll do that in Acts 4 13. That's the fourth point. Number one was pray as one, two was stand as one, three was speak as one, four was four is be confident as one. Be confident as one in Christ. A confidence that comes only by being with Jesus. Just like when Moses was with God in the mountain. Do you remember what happened to his face when he came down from the mountain? And how it shone? Do you remember the people's reaction? How scared they were? They were fearful. Stay away from us! Stay away from us! They were scared of Moses. And so what did Moses do? Put a veil over his face. When he came down from the mountain, he put a veil over his face because the people were scared of the presence of God. And Moses was making them uncomfortable. But in Jesus Christ, the veil is taken away. No need for fear. God's not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of love and power and of sound mind. The world's going to be scared of us. As we carry Jesus in our hearts and we try to share with them the spiritual spiritual help to help them grab hold of Jesus Christ. And just as Moses spoke with God and the glory that shone from the being of God's presence in his life and the veil had to be worn because of the people's fear, because of God's effect upon Moses, but in Christ the veil is taken away, there's no need to fear so in that physical inventory, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, to history, to recent history, to present day, the people you know to yourself experience it, live it, live it in the name of Jesus Christ. And don't just pray together. Don't just stand together. Don't just speak together as one. Don't just be confident together as one, but endure. Endure. And press. Bessie could recount the speaker that spoke years ago. Mark Foreman. Press! You feel like quitting. You're tired. You're weary. Or you're Thomas Jefferson facing a raging stream with a scared young private on your horse. And the only way to safety to get away from the enemy is to go across the raging river. Press! We keep going because we're going to cross the river one day. Because God waiting for us over there. So love as one. Here's one that's tough. Forgive. You think we got that one fixed here? We don't. I'm not blind. I'm not perfect, but I'm not blind. I know when a room can become filled with tense, tense. You, you know what I'm talking about? You can just feel the air thicken and things get tense. And you're like, what's wrong here? Yeah. It's like, oh. All you gotta do is mention certain people, certain things, certain events. Ah, oh, forgiveness. I'm still working on that one. Forgive as you've been forgiven until the final day forevermore. And you know what we'll do then? You know what we're gonna do in heaven forever? It's something the apostle told the Christians of Philippi to do. Philippians chapter 4 starts with the R word, the R. Rejoice. Rejoice. 
Rejoice now, it's one, because when you cross over, what a day of rejoicing now. There was a song when I was a kid to a different tune called Glorious Day. I sang it last Sunday night. Help me get through it today again. It's the same song, different tune, the same words. But it's about the same God that serves and the same hope to have. Look in Christ. What an honor to be with you today. Stand with me and join me as we sing unto the Lord and follow him. We whose hearts are holy here, may we find in us those through whom we can work victoriously. His work. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came down to be born of a virgin, dwelled among men, my example is he. We came flesh and the light shine among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved, dying he saved. Very he carried my sin far away. Rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming on the way of faith. One day they lay. Calvary's mountain, one day they need to die on a tree, suffering anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer is he. And say, you nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for me, living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he killed me, my sins far away, riding he dressed in the ground, waiting for him. One day he's coming. One day the reader could see it no longer. One day the stone will move away from the door. Then he arose, oh, death he had conquered. Now is the same my Lord at the Lord. Then through the Bible, through the good of my kingdom, and rising up in the land, living in the land, dying he saved me, buried he carried me, my sin far away, rising he blessed. Freely forever, one day he's coming on the wind stay. Lord, he does stay. Lord, he does stay. One day the drum and wings are more in time. One day the skies will be as glorious as the sun. 
Father God in heaven, we thank you for your love. We thank you for Jesus Christ and ask your blessing on our gathering today. And as we go forth, go forth in victory as our hearts truly belong to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm <laughs> <laughs> 